Hello and uh, welcome to this video. Um, today I will be talking about uh, virtual machine basics and uh, how to uh, think about virtual machines when you start using them. So, the um, virtual machines are used a lot these days. They're used all over the place. We have um, a lot of uh, virtualization going on, both with network equipment and with ordinary servers. Virtual machines is not containers, it's not Docker, but it is a self-contained machine. Um, we, when we use stuff like um, EXXI or uh, KVM, VirtualBox, VMware Workstation and such, we spin up virtual machines. Um, we, when, whenever you go and use a cloud service like DigitalOcean or Amazon Web Services, you are using virtual machines. So. In this video, I'll try to uh, get to some of the um, core concepts that is needed to understand this. First, let's do uh, ordinary machines. Simple, let's call them PC. This is all computers. Um, it doesn't matter if it's your phone, Raspberry Pi, whatever it is. The super basic version of this is that you have some sort of box and on the inside you have some sort of a processing unit this would be your CPU you have some sort of a memory that would be your RAM and you have some sort of um, storage so this is the the basic way of thinking about this is that all uh, all computers must have some thing that is used to do the computation. It needs to have some sort of uh, uh, working memory and it needs to have some sort of storage for the actual data that needs to be persistent across, say, reboots and such. Um, there's also speed differences. There will also be a lot of other devices, but in terms of uh, virtual machines to get you started, this is uh, basically what is needed. All of these things also have, uh, let's add uh, something here, some way of communicating with the outside world. This could be USB, for example, where you connect uh, your keyboard, your mouse. Um, could also be here that you connect uh, your graphics uh, adapter, your monitor. So some way of getting data in and out of uh, the machine. Let's do that nicer. So somehow we have an interface where we can get stuff in and out of the um, of the computer. Um, and then for our purposes, we also have this. Um, this is a NIC, or this is an interface. A NIC is a network interface card, which is the way for the uh, computer to talk uh, to. This would normally be let's call this Ethernet. This would be either uh, a wireless interface or a physical cable interface and such. So you have some processing power, you have a way of uh, remembering the uh, program, you have a way of uh, loading the into memory, and then you have your NIC, which is connected to some sort of, let's do that over here, some sort of network. This is the basic way of thinking about a PC. So looking from the outside, you basically have a box with a boundary where you can talk into it using USB or, well, graphics would be outgoing. So you will have your user standing on the outside looking in. And you will have a network interface card where you can look at the uh, computer from the uh, point of view of the network. From the inside, you can see some CPU, some RAM, some storage, and so on, and you can ship stuff out of this, or you can receive stuff from this. But basically, you have to have this, let's call it inside view, and the external view. So when you have the inside view, you know a lot of what's going on in the inside, you know which processes are running, and so on, and you can look out to the world using that and you have the external view when you look at it from the outside in. This will be uh, 
two core concepts that we'll get back to. Let's add another page. Yes. So, um, if I draw this one again, I would like to draw it here. And then we have some sort of CPU, we have some sort of memory, and we have some sort of storage. Looking from the inside, this looks like an ordinary physical machine. It even has some USB stuff and also have a network interface card. Let's not draw it like that. Let's just connect this to some sort of network. Ah, that was ugly. So then, hmm. What if all of this were actually inside? A very big box that has its own CPU, its own memory, and its own storage. So we will take some of this CPU power and give it to the virtual machine. We'll take some of the memory and put it inside here. We'll take some of the storage and put it in here. And still this outside guy will still have some programs running some uh, operating system oh. and so on but it will give a part of it to this device here and then we can actually do it one more time CPU memory storage and we have some of these and this would be your network interface card. And this guy, we can do like this also. This would be a network interface card. And just like we did before, we're just going to take some of this CPU stuff, some of the CPU power. We're going to take some of the memory. And we're going to take some of the storage. And the point is that, so the outside machine, we usually refer to that as the host. So the host will have some computing power, some amount of memory, some amount of storage, and it will dedicate some of that or share it, depending on context, with the internal machines. So looking from the outside, if you are um, sitting on the network, you will not be able to see if this is a virtual thing or a non-virtual thing. If you're looking from the network here, you will not be able to see it. If you look at it using USB, you must use some sort of virtualized USB thing and then it will be obvious that you have a virtual machine. A setup like this, when you look from the inside of this guy, if you sit, um, if you sit here, you can look out and see stuff coming in from the USB. You can see stuff going in and out of the network interface card. And you simply don't see that you are in a virtual machine. And the same goes down here. There will be ways of detecting if you are locked in a virtual machine or not, but normally it doesn't matter. If you are a web server, you don't care if you're in physical or virtual hardware, it's going to be exactly the same for you. So the, the host, will know which virtual machines it has running. And when you are creating virtual machines, you will be asked how many CPUs, how much memory, and how much storage you want to allocate. Some of this storage might be in other places, on the network, for example, but that's beside the point for this. There will also be a lot of other hardware that these things have in order to function, like serial connections and so on, but the main all computers have some sort of CPU, memory, and storage, and some way of talking to the world through their interfaces. I just want to add an extra thing here. So if I have um, yeah, our host here, it of course also has some sort of USB or graphics, and it will also have some sort of network interface card. Um, so this one is connect to some sort of network and you as the owner of the host 
the one that is managing the host can decide how this network in here this would be virtual network this is something that is generated in software you have some programs running on the host that emulate being a network so you can decide how this this thing here somehow is connected to the outside world I can tell you that we basically have three ways of doing that there is the no connection there is net or routed and the last one will be bridged but that is for a different video so you set up your virtual machines the software running inside the virtual machine normally does not know that it's in a virtual machine it actually doesn't care either so why would we want to do virtual machines well one of the points is that you can have a machine with a lot of power and normally when machines they are just running by themselves they're actually not using all their processor power so you can spin up 15 machines and they will share a lot of processor power and still not use a lot um, it's only if you have really resource intensive applications that this starts to be a problem you can also uh, if this would be a two web servers they could be load balancing so you can kill one of them and the other one is still functioning and then you can spin up new ones there are a lot of options for this but the takeaway just to highlight important stuff here let's do that in red oh we have it in red you have the host that would be the let's call it the physical machine the physical machine the physical host and then you have a virtual machine this would be virtual machine a this would be virtual machine b and they are running on the host so whenever you work with virtual machines you will ask how much processing power does it have how much memory does it have how much storage does it have and where is it running it might be that the host is actually not a physical machine it might be that the host is a data center where this concept of one host is kind of uh, difficult to define where they share in uh, some sort of cluster there are a lot of interesting things you can do with virtual machines but this is the basic diagram that you must remember whenever you work with virtual machines where is it running do we have enough uh, uh, power how much have we allocated to each machine and how are each machine connected to some sort of network um, that would be what i want to say about virtual machines so if you have any questions or anything please ask them in the um, comments below or if you have um, if you want a transcript or something similar please say so also thank you for listening